some stuff that's also not talked about yet. I guess I'll just, I'll, I always like to give you some exclusives here on this show. Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. My name is Belgian Jasper. If this is your first time on the channel, hit subscribe right now. One of my favorite people to interview is Jarvis Leatherby, the bass player and manager of Serif Ungle, the iconic uh, doom metal band. Uh, he obviously also plays in his own band, Night Demon. Serif Ungle has just re-released uh, their classic album, Frost and Fire. Uh, and uh, to talk about that and a bunch more, uh, I called up Jarvis for a fun conversation. Uh, Jarvis, I mean, we spoke about a year ago. Um, okay. But um, uh, what we're going to talk about now is not a year, but 40 years in the making. Uh, we've got the beautiful reissue of Frost and Fire. Um, and for a, f for a lucky few, there's even a piece of wood and some carpet in there as well. <laughs> Yes. You yes, guys had fun yes. putting this together. That's clear. Absolutely. Absolutely. Before I have to address one thing though, because you know, all the the last time we saw you guys, you know, before COVID, when we saw you with either Night Demon or uh, with uh, Seraf Ungle play, we saw a very clean shaven Jarvis. And when I last thought, <laughs> spoke to you, you had a, a hint of a mustache. Um, it, is it is it are, the, are you doing some sort of a playoff thing like it's the mustache the legend uh well like i you know everybody like had their covid beard you know <laughs> and like i don't want to like i'm just keeping the dream alive man you know like uh <laughs> you know uh you, you know it's like why like oh well we're we're now we're not in a pandemic anymore we're in an endemic you know or uh like let's go back to normal like no, nothing's ever going to be normal again you know like yeah. so it's good to have a rebirth sometimes you know and so the i guess I'd, i'm better off in heavy metal looking like a biker um i used to get criticized for years you know um especially with night demon just the fact that my look wasn't very heavy metal you yeah. know like i looked like uh elvis you know but <laughs> But I bang my head harder than any long hair. That's for sure. You know, you so it didn't it didn't matter to me. But but whatever. I if if you you know I'm joining the club here. So there you go. <laughs> Frost and fire. Last time we spoke, we were you were you you told me a couple of your plans. In the meantime, some of those plans have come to fruition. One of them, when what I was super excited about is the uh, reissue of the oh, yeah. the Orange album on, on cassette, on your own cassette label. Uh, and I think by now, half of my cassette collection is powered by uh, Iron Grip Records. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, those were 66 limited editions or 666 limited editions if right. i remember correctly yeah. for the new ultimate fan edition of the of the reissue of uh, frost and fire the 40 40th anniversary it was limited to 50 and he left or uh, were all those swept up by uh, the diehard fans 15 one five yeah oh yeah right um, one five sorry sorry yeah um there are still a couple left it's not a cheap package you know uh <laughs> and it's an interesting thing to spend your money on you know but uh i'm just glad that these guys kept all this stuff for so long yeah. you know you like you have this stuff and you want to do something with it and to somebody it's valuable you know and we put a lot of care into that packaging you know but the the thing is like you're owning an actual piece of the studio yeah you know what i'm saying it's in all the photos from the 70s and 80s and it's like all their albums were recorded there um you know and so it's a just a really cool thing for the total diehard fan and not only that but we're giving the art book away in that package that's signed so you get all the reissue stuff plus an original sealed copy of frost and fire that the box was just open from october 30th 1980 like it's i mean you can't get the, that alone is would probably yeah. go on ebay for the for this price you know so 
that's the real gem in there, you know. The whole thing was is that they released this album on their own independently. Mm -hmm. And outside of the punk rock scene in 1981, it's like, come on, like no, no, no rock bands were doing this, but they, they, you know, the orange tape that you're holding in your hand was only 50 cop, 50 copies made in 1978. Right. And that, that didn't get them anywhere. So they were like, look, we, we need to, we're not going to be like every other band and make a demo tape of this frost and fire recording and try and get signed. We're going to make an LP that looks like this has already come out. We're going to contact Michael Whalen and get this iconic artwork. We're going to, we're going to put this out on our own label, even though we have no distribution. And we're going to just, we're going to approach radio and approach record companies and distributors with the actual album, you know? And I, I give it up to those guys for having the foresight to do that 40 years ago. Mm -hmm. And really they're pioneers in so many ways and musically they are, but I never thought about it. Um, distribution wise, they are too, you know, and this, and this proves it. It, sure, it was a 40th anniversary of that album. The band as a whole is really getting to their 50th anniversary. Um, right. And there's some big plans for that as well. Um, to quote you directly, last time we spoke, hey man, it's time for walking. And well, lo and behold, <laughs> yeah. uh, right? in the summer that's coming, not only walking, but walking will be one of the, the places where the fans can see the band play. So my first and foremost very serious question is have you already talked to the band about wardrobe what they can and cannot wear <laughs> no not yet but um i'm always it doesn't matter when i talk about it it's the moment right before stage where it actually comes to a head right so like you could say it all you want but we'll see what happens but yeah. no no there it's been good actually we played our first show go back in Atlanta last weekend yeah the and had a wardrobe had a wardrobe snafu right before that we went on stage with the, with I won't name the member but somebody forgot you know some of their stuff and they're like well I've got that I have a red tie-dye shirt or and I'm like well whatever comes second it's gonna be a yes because <laughs> that's not gonna happen you know so uh you know uh, it's uh it's Go still, to the merch booth still... right now, grab one of our shirts, <laughs> put that <laughs> the on. Saga, <laughs> the saga continues, uh, for good or for better or worse. I know it's early days, perhaps, but what can, what can you share about what the fans should expect when uh, you guys take the stage in front of 80,000 crazy European metalheads? Yeah. You know, I don't know. Like we have, we have quite a few shows around the world next year that we're really excited about. Um, we've got some stuff happening before that. So like, I haven't really gotten there yet uh, with, with what's gonna happen. I'm still waiting to see what our time slot is and how long the set is. I can't imagine it'd be longer than 45 to 50 minutes. Um, it's hard to cram mm -hmm. it, that in there. I mean, these guys want to play all the new stuff, right. obviously, but it's just, I have to break their heart all the time and just be like, look, man, like on a headlining show, we can do that, you know, but, but in a situation like this, we've got to play the hits, you know, and, and, um, yeah, I, I really don't know, man. I, I don't, I, I don't know what to expect myself, honestly, you know? So uh, it'll be a sight to see for sure. I'm just happy that these guys get to play in front of that many people, you know? I mean, yeah, that's sure. that's the thing. I, I'm really excited for them, you know? Yeah. I mean, you know, I've got my whole life ahead of me. So uh, no, I just, I'm joking. But uh, but but no, I'm really, I'm really proud, you know, yeah. that, that this could happen. And uh, there, <clears throat> we're, our spot's pretty good in the lineup too, as far as, you know, on the poster and like, I'm, I'm pretty, we're in front of some other bands that I consider pretty, pretty well established, you know? So yeah, I think yeah, these yeah. guys are getting their, their, uh, 
what's what's due to them, you know, and uh, I just hope it all goes well. Uh, there's two things that you mentioned when you were talking about you know, the lead up to walking. Um, you know, not the only show, time to, to, to try some things. And you mentioned a few other things that I want to come back to in just a second. Yep. Let's start with the first one. Um, one of the shows that I think everybody must be pretty excited about because the lineup is just to die for for people that love retro heavy metal is the Hell's Heroes Festival, where you guys yes. will be, uh, I think, headlining or co-headlining. Um, and it just yes. it's, it's just a who's who of of either bands that are back or bands that are doing really like trying really hard to make people believe that they were around in the early 80s that's a great festival one of my best friends christian larson is the promoter of that festival he also sings in a black metal band called necrofire and a traditional heavy metal band called night cobra yeah. um uh and who also released great albums and eps yes yes and so He, he was previously in a band called Venomous Maximus and they they came to play my festival in California, Frost and Fire, mm -hmm. and he had such a good time and he was running this venue in Houston and he's like, I got to do this in Houston. And I said, well, I'm taking a break from the fest, so now's the perfect time. So we help each other out a lot in organizing stuff like that. And um, he's he's done a very good job with the lineup this year. And he's put the money forward to get a lineup like that. And that's what you got to do. And yeah. it's, it was sold out very quickly. And it's, it's putting the, for the United States, I mean, there's nothing like it. Night Demon's going to be on tour with Satan. And bo both of our bands are going to be playing that too. So it's like, I'll be pretty busy there, you know. Uh, uh, I got a lot of things going on, but it's good. It's good to be a part of it. And it's, you know, a lot of the tickets have sold to an international audience, which is great. So uh, there'll be, it's a big reunion for a lot of people. You mentioned Night Demon. We see some cool t-shirts behind you as well. Uh, even when you're not releasing oh, yeah. a new single, <laughs> you guys, you know, bring out reissues as well. Like, uh, oh, beautiful. nice. Okay. Um, and and when Sirif is touring, you guys are touring with them. What else is planned for uh, for Night Demon when you don't have to be working with Sirif Ungle? Yeah, I, it's crazy. Like, uh, we're doing our first show back in LA, uh, December 10th for the Decibel Metal and Beer Fest, which is cool. Um, so that'll be nice. Uh, and then we're going to take a little time. We're, we're finishing up an album. Uh, so that'll be done. We're going to take the, all the, the music's been done for a bit, but I got to finish up some of my bits. So we're going to take okay. the first part of, of 2022 to do that. Um, and Sarah Thungle will enter the studio at the same time to do a new full length record, which, you know, may be the band's final record, you know, but, uh, It's, it picks off where Forever Black left off, and it's. I think the songs are even stronger. I'm really happy that this is happening. Um, you know, I wasn't a big fan of a band being around for that long and taking 25 years off and doing a new record, but the, the last one did very well on the charts, and the yeah. fans loved it. And so we're we're ready to do another one. So both bands will be we'll be uh, finishing stuff up in the studio earlier in the year. I'll just give you the whole rundown of the whole year. Fuck it. I mean, so, and uh, some stuff that's also not talked about yet. I guess I'll just, I'll, I always like to give you some exclusives here on this show. Um, uh, March 25th, uh, Night Demon will be releasing a, uh, an album called Year of the Demon, which uh, is the 2020 singles collection. So nice. you'll have you'll have those five singles for the first time in one collection. The B-sides, you know, have never been released except for the seven inches. So yeah. uh, and very few people have those. So that we're looking forward to doing that. And we and really want to put something. to get also. Like, yeah, right. We everyone really wanted that went to put on. Yeah, I mean, we should, I we should just call it Night Beyonce by now. Let's, let's, let's be oh, honest. Oh, come on. Shit. Oh, you're, hey, I'm dropping blushing. albums without letting anybody know and being sold out <laughs> without anybody else can get to them. I'm blushing. That's pretty good.
in April, Satan and Night Demon will tour the United States for about a month. Um, we'll be making that appearance at Hell's Heroes. Then right after that, we go to Keep It True in Germany, where Sarah Thungle will, will headline. And I will see you there. All right. And the following week, we'll be in France for the Courts of Chaos. Both Night Demon and Sarah Thungle will play that. Night Demon and Midnight will do a co-headlining tour of Europe, um, May through June. Um, and that ends with um, a festival that we're putting on. Uh, we're doing a Frost and Fire in Derry, Northern Ireland in, in late June. We're calling it Frost and Fireland. And you'll see pretty much all the Iron Grip bands on that. Um, so that'll be really cool. It's a very intimate show. We're going to limit it to 500 tickets only. And uh, it's going to be a very cool weekend up there. Um, and then Night Demon will be playing Bang Your Head Festival in July in Germany. Great festival. Um, then we do Vakken with Sarah Thungle. Sarah Thungle will also be doing Psycho Las Vegas in August of 2022. Um, all, both bands go to Mexico for a weekend for a festival early September. Then um, Night Demon will be going back to Europe to do 15 shows and then right back to the U.S. to do 18 shows. A triple headline bill with three three-piece bands. I can't mention the other two yet. I, that one I can't. We'll be going back to Germany for uh, our annual Halloween festival, Heavy Hamburg Halloween. Then Night Demon will have a new record November 4th, which we will play some exclusive album release shows throughout the month or worldwide. So uh, it's, and and then Sarah Thungle will be playing November 11th, uh, this is not announced either, in LA for the Decibel Metal and Beer Fest then. Uh, Sarah Thungle has not played Los Angeles since 1990, I believe. So uh, this will be a Probably very, very, very cool outing. I'm a little nervous about it. Um, last weekend, you know, Night Demon and Sierra Thungle, we both had our first shows back. Night Demon played in North Carolina and Sierra Thungle mm -hmm. played in Atlanta. And man, we just came back from the trip and I was just like completely exhausted. And I was like, how is I doing this every day of my life? Like, I just, you know, I guess, you, you know, two years passes, you age too, right? And you just get used to being domesticated again. Yeah, and it's yeah. like, holy shit, this is a lot of work, man. You know, like I miss, I really got used to sleeping. I had never slept much <laughs> in my life, you know? You, you know, you want to be seen. And after <clears throat> all this stuff going on, you know, sometimes you wonder, like, do people still care about what I'm doing? Uh, right. the, you know, is there is there a market for this still? Uh, you know, are people, they've had time away from what I do. Do they miss it or do, are they moved on? You know, yeah. and, and thankfully, at least the organizers and the people willing to pay for it are are still interested you know yeah, yeah, so sure, we still sure. have a we still have a career and, and we still have i'm just gonna make the most of it and i you know i told myself the next time i get on stage if i have the opportunity to do that again i'm gonna play it like it's my last for real and, and you know we're, we're really looking forward to just doing as much as we can in the coming year no awesome i mean and what an anniversary year that will be by the end. Oh, absolutely. Awesome, awesome. Um, and I'm sure that you'll uh, capture that where possible uh, so that, uh, that I mean, we have will to, man. generate content for We them. have to, we, we have to. The, you know, the excitement is there for the people that are that are there to witness it, you know? And, and that's, we just, we naturally have to just feed off that, you know? Well, Jarvis, I know so much more now than half an hour ago. And I want to thank you for always being super open and very real with me uh, and, uh, and and giving us a little bit of a, a peek into, you know, all those crazy plans that you're working on. Well, yeah, thank you for giving me this platform, you know, and thanks for being interested in, in all this stuff that we do in this thing called heavy metal, man. And 
you're just as much a part of it as all of us and together is where we really create something you know so thank there you, you You are awesome for watching this video. Click right here to see more content like it and subscribe to the channel.